Hello. So welcome. Oh. It's uh, Neurodiversity Celebration Week. My name is Jane Hines and I'm an apprenticeship coach on the LEAP team. So I'm here with some lovely people um, who are going to introduce themselves. Uh, and I'm here um, because I actually have ADHD, Attention Deficit Hyperactive Disorder. I will come to a bit more in that detail in a few moments, uh, but let's hear from the others on on uh, the podcast. So my name is Nick Bowen. I am the customer service manager at TP's Green and Gold, and I have dyslexia. Hi, my name's Kane Moore. I'm a warehouse worker at BSS. My dyslexia is English related. And I'm Michael Collins, apprenticeship manager the apprenticeship team and I have ADHD. I'm going to come to you Nick if that's all right first of all how would you describe your your neurodiversity? For me my dyslexia is more around when it comes to mass reading so I can be quite overwhelmed with the volume of reading that sometimes I have to do with part of my job mm. and that's when it takes me a bit longer to read because I will read something two or three times not only because I want to make sure it sinks in but also to make sure I'm understanding what it says so that's where it really sort of grows to me around my dyslexia. Um, my spelling and grammars, you know, has always been a bit of an issue, but not massively compared to, to my reading. Right. Okay. Yeah. So it takes you longer then, does it? To, to you would say. To, to, yeah. To... So I'll, I'll read a page two or three times just to make sure it's embedded because what I don't want to do is respond or create a pack of off of that that's the wrong information because I've misunderstood something. Mm. my role I, I do a lot of customer emails letters social media so it's kind of like i need to make sure what i'm reading is i'm understanding so i reply accordingly mm. okay yeah and, and is that would that would you would you recognize that cane or i mean you've got dyslexia as well so do, do you recognize yes. what you said there or is that different for you like with me my main issue is spelling and reading so um it's more understanding what the word is by sort of like saying it in my head and trying to figure out what that word is but mm. spelling i've always been terrible at because um i always miss one or two letters out of a normal word which usually a normal person wouldn't have any issue with and then uh, short term memory and long term memory have always been an issue related to it as well. Ah, interesting. Yeah. So, right. So quite so in a way different. You've both got the same diagnosis, same same neurodiverse condition, but there are differences there, isn't it? In yeah. in, in yeah. yeah. Each just makes a person have different challenges. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so. So thank you. Hold that for the moment. So I'm just going to come over to Michael because both Michael and myself have ADHD. Um, and there is that thing that no, you, you, you that, that I have read, um, you know, you meet an ADHD person or person with ADHD, should I say, and you've met a person with ADHD. Um, and so we do have those similar traits. Michael, talk me through what your ADHD and, and how you would describe your ADHD. Um. I guess the starting point to me, like we just mentioned, though, it's just different, isn't it? And that's, mm. I think neurodiversity to me is just our brains is slight, everyone's is slightly different and they work in a different way. Um, yeah. So it's definitely not a deficit as such. I see it as just a different, yeah, the brain's differently. So um, my, my my brain is 100 mile per hour all the time. So I'm <laughs> um, new ideas, thinking about everything possible that's factual or made up in my own mind mm. um so yeah always on the go always fidgeting mm. i've even actually got something in my hand now my, my daughter's little fidget toy so you know 100 mile per hour um but within that um i feel very empowered that i, I love juggling so many different things so mm. i'm doing so many things but it's always bearing in mind that actually that could then be a challenge and overwhelm me so i would say that probably yeah, summarizes me quite well. Mm, yeah, yeah, and I can I can certainly relate to, to that. Always on, always on the go. Um, yeah, like driven like a motor is what they say, and that that is is 
um, and down rabbit holes. Um, you, you know, you you might set off to to, to research a, a recipe. Uh, I often find a recipe to bake something or to cook something, and before I know it, I'm looking at holidays and booking a holiday because you've gone down all these different rabbit holes. Yeah, um, and then you have it on the other side where that there's no focus there. The point isn't it where a lot of the things lots of people have, but it's when it's continuous and hell of a lot, and it's a really big challenge for your for day to day. Yeah. Absolutely, uh, yeah. The, the lack of focus, the concentration, those 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 challenges that that come about from from having um, from having the you know the the ADHD. Um, so, so all of us um, do have an understanding of our neurodiversity. But did we, you know, did we have much of that that knowledge before we were diagnosed and I guess we were all diagnosed at different stages in our in our lives um my uh, my diagnosis came very recently um not until July last year um I was one of the lost generation of girls they call it because it it was certainly not picked up in girls in in, in um I mean I'm 50 54 in April so you know we I come from that generation where it wasn't seen as being a condition that girls had we were able to mask it in our younger years um, and it was very much stereotypically uh, diagnosed in in boys um, and then it's only in the last nine years that it was realized it could go on to ad into adulthood so it's an early it's a late diagnosis um what about yourselves when, when did your when did the diagnosis for you come in your lives and what did you know about the condition before you were diagnosed um should we start with you Kane maybe so pretty much I learn about my diagnosis nearer to the end of second uh higher school so pretty much near GCSEs so by the time it came to GCSEs I really struggled with my English exams so mm. um like I struggle really badly with punctuation verbs all that sort of stuff because uh, where I'm putting so much focus into understanding how to spell the words and what the sentence is saying, I'm not really thinking about where punctuation should be. Mm. So I usually sort of skip over that when I'm actually writing sentences and stuff like that. So when it comes to like the kind of the reading and the work then, so how are you coping with that part? How do you manage that? Uh, normally it's not too bad during work time so they, there's not too much paperwork and if um, if I need help then I'll ask for it yeah mm. by you Nick so I was nine when I was diagnosed I was quite lucky I was, I was early on I had a teacher that initially thought I needed glasses um, but that didn't solve my problem, although I did need them. But she realised that my reading was different from everybody else, and she explained to my mum that she thought I might be dyslexic. And she gave my mum a number to call, um, which was a, a kind of almost learning support system, and they booked me in and they assessed me and told me I was dyslexic. I thought, well, I've never heard of dyslexia, and to be honest with you, it's only as I've got older that I've learned more and more about dyslexia. Mm -hmm. Growing up, yeah. dyslexia was would never seen in a positive light you know you'd always have the kid that would pick on you because you were classed as being stupid or thick because you had what you know back then was special needs classes and then they obviously turned mm. into eventually and whilst it was great having the extra support I never always felt appreciated for having the extra because of what came with it the negative that came with it and my mum always say to me ignore their two thoughts you'll be fine you know, there's plenty of people in the world that are dyslexic, you'll be all right. And I could never relate to anyone, so I didn't know anyone else who was dyslexic. And my mum was mm. like, well, you know, Richard Branson's dyslexic, Whoopi Goldberg's dyslexic, yeah. you know, Bill Gates is, you know, and, and then sort of to be able to answer, well, if they do all these amazing things, it can't be that bad to be dyslexic. Absolutely. And you start yeah. changing that thought process, because when you're a child, if someone tells you, something negative about you that you're stupid you're thick enough mm. start to believe that absolutely and yeah. that whole mindset of changing of the way i was thinking about it and how i dealt with it that made me say that 
I'll, su- I'll succeed no matter what. I'll keep persevering. I'll keep pushing. And it takes me back to the differences. It's not a deficit. It's no. the, t- the typical way we've always taught people. We've assumed everyone learns that way. And because you need to be, have that different support, a different method. Mm. Doesn't mean yeah. And it is, it's about each one of us learn differently. Yeah. You know, it's, you know, you could go quite into whole facts and studies around kind of brains and all that side of things. But it, but it is true, you know, neurodiverse people do have a different way of learning. Mm. It's not a right way or a wrong way. We just learn differently and we just need to find our own way of how we learn. But mm. also we need that support structure to be able to do that. But when you're a child, you need that teacher to be able to help you find those things. Yeah. 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 I'm sure, yeah. like, sorry, I'm sure, like even Albert Einstein, that I'm sure I've read somewhere has initially got it. Again, no facts, disclosure. Yeah. That's, but I, I'm sure I read somewhere that he could be. It just, just says it all, doesn't it? It's yeah. I believe. I believe. I think I've read somewhere along that. I mean, there is just there are thousands of people out there, um, you know, and it's just there's so much information out there now about all the different types of neurodiverse, and mm. it's really interesting. It's if we don't spend the time to educate just one person. We'll yeah. never change the mindset of everybody else. You know, it's it's quite a big thing. I mean, if you look at dyslexia, they say ninety-seven percent of the population sees it as a negative a negativity. You know, made by dyslexia is an amazing sort of site that's got lots of information on, not just for those of dyslexia, but for parents and for workplace. Mm. And you, can, you can do to help spot you know dyslexia and how you can have hints and tips on how to work with them because businesses like us we you know they are we should be looking for neurodiverse people like you know they, yeah. they, there's also another study out there that says by 2025 most of the workforce will be neurodiverse mm. Mm. So, you know it's a big thing that we start looking and thinking that way yeah so I, again I, the word neurotypical as well that, that could does that eventually go because is it just, we've assumed everyone's this way and then we've got the small bunch over here who are different but are we eventually about knowledge actually there's you know there's there isn't no big broad amount of people who are typical as such it's you know we're a lot of yeah exactly and a lot of systems and processes are set up aren't they by and for the neurotypical neuromajority i heard neuromajority used yesterday which which is yeah uh, rather neurotypical um but actually what why if we flip that and we set up these systems and these processes it, for by and for or for neurodiverse, then ev- then if we're all working to that, then actually, will will we have two different two different groups? Do do you know? It's it's mm. it's something to think about in a way, isn't it? It's yeah. um um and 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 you know this is this is neurodiversity celebration celebration week. What is it about our neurodiversity that we want to to celebrate? What benefits as opposed to the challenges? Are you bringing I think to it's your skill sets? I think it's yeah. more the things that we're great at. You know, yeah, absolutely. Society, we're very quick to judge and pick on things we're not good at, but we don't ever celebrate the things we're really good at. And absolutely. there are some yeah. things we're amazing at. You know, that not just like, but people with ADHD and other that we should be singing and dancing about those things. Mm. You know, our creativity side and our you know all those yes. sort of things that we we've got like you know we can really sort of see different ways of working understanding and just we need to celebrate that more and we just scream about it more you know in some respects mm. absolutely it's using it to an advantage isn't it it's playing to people's strengths supporting them with their their challenges maybe but absolutely yeah, yeah and, there, and there will always be those challenges but play to the strengths and the benefits to the workforce from 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 those 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 strengths what you know so so, so kane how long have you been with with the business now did you, were you... Uh, about about four months now how are you being supported and 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 how do you feel your strengths are being being utilized uh usually they go a little bit slower with me just so i do understand what i'm doing they give me a lot of support around the work uh so if i need any spelling help they, mm-hmm. I usually go over to someone and ask, and they're happy mm-hmm. to help. I find um, the, like dyslexia and stuff like that, I find it's not really talked about. 
so mm. i find nowadays it's quite a new thing so the more people talk about it the more people will understand it and during school and workplaces it will help everyone understand how to help them and let them progress within the business or during school. Yeah, mm. I completely agree with that. Yeah. 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 I think for some of us, you know, we grew up not having much information out there about ADHD and dyslexia. And I think it's, it is, as you start saying, it's a more of a, a recent thing that there's so much out there. I think mm. when I look back to when I was a kid, a naughty child, was labelled ADHD. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. ADHD, they could just be a naughty child. That's it. But mm -hmm. actually, if they are ADHD, how are you supporting them? And it was a case mm -hmm. of, oh no, they're just, you know, pass them off. And that's yeah, just the case. I, That's literally the journey as well. I, I was only recently diagnosed and I even know my hands up. And I always always like to think I'm so open minded, but I still I had that bit of stigma thinking when I was told I'd ADHD. I wasn't throwing like chairs at teachers and the amount <laughs> I've learned since then to realise that are so far from the, the the truth. Yeah. Um yeah, it's gonna blow my mind away. And and and, and my big part of mine came from um my son who's at school and he's seven years old, but even the first couple of years at school, it seems to be slowly declining now and a, a test the other month where um he got full marks like halfway through it and then stopped and did nothing else. So it and it, it not failed, didn't pass as a fail, but he didn't do very well on the test. And I was like, well, did was anyone keeping an eye on them, giving him a prompt? And it's only the more I've looked into it and saw symptoms of like well traits like I have in my son. And it's just opened my eyes to think, you know, we have to treat everyone differently and mm. get them out of them. And if I didn't say that, I'm like, I'm assuming my son would have gone through school like I did and slowly go off the cliff at the end and struggle with it. Um, but now I feel so empowered to talk about it and kind of embrace. I did find during school time, um, it was a bit of a struggle to uh, get teachers to give you the extra help because mm. it's easier to um, just keep everything the same and change everything for that one person. Like with me, I had to fight to get rid of uh, learning Spanish and French and have a extra English lesson replaced for it. Which, um, yeah, I replaced English, uh, Spanish and French for uh, an extra English lesson to help me progress in English. But we had to fight quite a bit to actually get that changed. Mm. Crazy. Mm. What are you doing, Nick, in the workplace then? What supports in place? What are you doing differently? So for me, a lot of it is just having extra time to be able to read things. And sometimes I'll go home and I'll read things in my own time just to make sure my understanding. And I'm quite happy to, you know, to do that. But my boss is great. He'll give me all the support I need. But I also use um, voice notes on our Google Docs. So voice, I mean, I can sometimes just talk into it and it makes it a bit easier because having to read and put it on the paper my brain will start thinking, what are you doing? But ultimately, just speaking on there makes it a really, really easy to fast sometimes because I'll mm. kill two birds in one stone by sort of reading what I'm doing, but also repeating back onto a system so that actually it is also still embedding. Yeah. And I get to make sure that I, I have an understanding that way. There's loads of things out there that we can, you know, we can use within the business. Yeah. Um, so it's, you know, it's quite great like that. And that's why I'm so I'm so passionate with talk as well. Cause so many ideas, so people are used to cope and, and, and do things differently and sharing them. Imagine, mm -hmm. like a great, great one with my team. So they'll, they'll come to me on like the the chat, the um, kind of messenger piece, and they'll they'll ask me to do something. But if if I'm doing something else, I can't do it right then. I'm guaranteed to to definitely forget and do something else every single time. Mm -hmm. So I I always make sure I go. Put it in an email or if i'm gonna call I, i'll put it on a document so it's it's there and it's just them little things isn't it that we can all do and, and share you know, just, uh, yeah I, yeah absolutely just just those little those little strategies like now i i i 
I mean, I had two screens. I now have three, including my laptop, so that I can have things that I need to see the whole time. Because if, if, if I don't see it and it goes out of sight, it goes completely out of mind. Mm -hmm. um, it's that out of sight, out of mind, it's gone. Um, so there are things that I need up on the screen the whole time. Otherwise, it will just get forgotten about. Um, and I needed that extra screen. Um, you know, I thought two screens was enough, but actually it's a third, you know, I need the, you know, a third screen. But also you talked about those voice notes into Google, into Google Docs, um, which I didn't realise you could do. So I've learned something today. But the rec transcript on rec meetings has been a game changer on Google. Meetings has been a game changer for me um, because, you know, if I'm having a meeting with somebody, and I'm, I'm trying to type and listen at the same time. I can't hear it and type. So, by having a transcript afterwards, really, is really really helpful. Um, so, I, I think yeah, those systems are actually not just working for for us, but they're working for everybody as well, aren't they? So we're they're they're, they're very very helpful. I think it's about uh, just knowing where they are and where to find them as well. Yeah. You know, there's like color the color the color overlay. So. Some of such people find that having different color backgrounds helps them with overlay. So it just helps them understand and read better and things like that. It doesn't work for everybody, but it's about knowing where I can get access to those things. Yeah. How, mm. how, how do you all feel about talking about this? Um, so if, if I start, so I, so I've only recently diagnosed, it took a while. I had to understand it first, I felt like more about me and ADHD. Um, even up until this, to be honest, is that a little bit of, nervousness talking about because it's still a stigma like we said around things but when i really think about it i'm probably in the, the best company i could possibly that to talk about these things i mean the the, the networks we have uh you know dni is, is a massive forefront isn't it of the business yeah. um really seeing the benefit of, of it so I, I i feel very comfortable talking about it i mean what how do you guys feel oh, i feel pretty comfortable about talking about it because like like i've said before the only way I feel like people are going to understand the whole situation of it is by people like us being able to come out and talk about it and explain our struggles with uh, our no neurodiversity. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you'd asked me a few years back, I wouldn't have been sat here doing this sort of conversation or did the record back last year because I felt that. I didn't want to be judged like I was as a child. Yeah. But as mm. I done other things and different things with my role, it's made me want to help us talk about it more. And obviously we've got the ability network and because of the platforms out there in the in the world now that talk about, you know, in the universe, it's made it easy for me to stand there and go, Yeah, I'm happy to do that. It's easy to talk about it. And you yeah. can do it in a safe and open environment. And that's the that's probably the most important thing about people having a safe space to be able to do that as well. Yeah. and feeling comfortable it may not be in this sort of forum you know as we're doing today but within the ability networks you know mm -hmm. and the other you know networks and you know all the and the crowd network and the ace all those different things you know there is a space where you can go and have those conversations yeah. you know and it's about doing those things and if not finding someone within that network that you can have that conversation with if you needed to mm. yeah i i totally agree i think that um had I had this diagnosis with other companies I've worked for previously, I may not have felt quite the same confidence in 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 speaking about it. Um, but then, on the other hand, they those companies may have moved on a bit more in their education around it, um, as it in fact it has moved on throughout the years. Um, so yeah, I do feel that I can can speak about it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So it's only recently, I, I recently told my manager as well, and I, I was very fortunate and look, I feel lucky that I've, I've always been open about my, my traits and how I work. So before the diagnosis, my line manager knew you know, that the things I can do and I struggle with. So it's always kind of played to that strength. So when I did talk about it, it wasn't um, kind of much different, really. Well, there's no difference at all. I've still got the same support there. But um, there was still that. I say that that thing there, but I'm just so confident that yeah, as, as a group we can talk about it and we should absolutely talk about it more as much as we can. Yeah. Um, it also helps those that potentially have all that those that haven't been diagnosed, yeah. that mm. of 
where they can go and have that conversation with because ultimately they may have the same sort of similar traits and thoughts of well that you know that we you've all had we've all had when we were younger and because they're not being diagnosed it's well where do i go how do i absolutely and it's yeah. that whole, you know understanding of that i mean i don't know about adhd but with dyslexia there is a massive cost involved you know yeah. it's no longer a nhs you know no payment it is private and has been for many many years now you know mm. most people are the don't have the spare 700 pounds to go and get tested yeah no it's no it's a big big chunk of money and yes it might make a massive difference but as i was you know it will change those things but for a child it's a massive thing so actually it should be free for children well, i'd like it to be free for everybody but actually you know if we start with children mm -hmm. give them a fighting chance Absolutely, it, it shouldn't. It shouldn't hold back. And like the, the the biggest one when I, I remember when I first was told ADHD, I've got ADHD. It was like, no wonder the like thirty last thirty plus years have been so hard work, and of like everything feels like a hundred times harder. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, <laughs> I can relate to that definitely. Yeah. 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 Stop me, I'm honest. I, so where I, I think from when I've gone to school to where I am now as an apprenticeship manager, but I would never expect, and it probably is them. Um, quality traits of ADHD that probably got me here, the creative thinking and the, the challenging yeah. things, which annoy people in my team sometimes, but it's the thing that's helping me grow and, and the team, you know, the team grow. Um, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Talk about it, let's embrace it. Absolutely. And I'd say I'm, I'm doing what I'm doing now because I have ADHD, not despite it, you know, um, because I've, I've, I love change. I love trying different things. I love anything that's new because it keeps that dopamine, you know, um, increasing in 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 the brain. Um, so I've I've taken risks. Um, some people maybe wouldn't feel safe in doing that, um, but yeah, I'd say that I've got had some of the opportunities and and doing what I'm doing, not yeah because of it because of my neurodiversity, not despite it. I find that people understand a bit more of what's happening with them from experiences. So if they hear uh, like someone else has the same sort of issues as them, then they start to think to themselves, oh, maybe I have the same um, like dyslexia if they have struggle with reading and they can't understand why. If someone mm. else has the same sort of issues, then it goes through their mind thinking that, they might have the same problem so the more people talk about it the more people can understand how to um, benefit from the dyslexia and to help them through it yeah mm. spot on so to, to round it up there should we should try to think of one word to describe you are divergent or how you feel about it in one word is that possible oh gosh how do i feel about in my words the problem is me and jane have got like a million ideas in our heads so yeah <laughs> we can't stick to one word that's the other thing is that you know where one word will do we'll we'll write a whole essay on it quirky quirky i feel quirky i feel that i, I don't don't i don't want to shy away from yeah let's see lots of words not one word <laughs> yeah i think i'd be more out of the endless possibilities that we have yeah <laughs> that was around six words nick yeah. <laughs> Have you got say um, overwhelming? Yeah, yeah, it's a good one. Yeah. yeah. That one. Um individual. Yeah, so, very work. good. Yeah. Definitely. Individual, isn't it? And, and you get the most out of them. Anything else anyone wants to add? Well, it's been great to talk about it. Yeah, it has. Yeah, All right. Okay. Well, thank you very much, everyone. Um, it's been great meeting up with you and chatting to you. Um, and uh, yeah, great session. Thank you very much. Um, and let's continue celebrating neurodiversity.